Good morning, how are you today? Today in the studio we are going to be carrying on with landscape painting and in particular we are carrying on with Nathan Falk's painting course which I will link down below. I am working on week two which is again doing black and white value studies but in with a little bit more structured theory behind it. Now I know someone out there will leave a comment saying this video is pointless because you don't teach us anything. Two things I want to talk to you about. One is I can't teach you these things because these are copyrighted material and if what I'm doing interests you and you want to find out more then I will leave the link down below to the course I'm working from. Please don't expect me to share copyrighted material that other people are trying to earn a living from. Second of all, I think there's a slight misunderstanding that I am a watercolour painting teacher and I am not. I started this channel off about a year and a half ago as a complete newbie to watercolour with no training, no understanding really of what's going on and this channel is about me learning watercolour painting and me taking you through the process as I learned them. So as I learned colour theory, I did a colour theory series so that I can share what I learned as soon as I learned them because I think that's when we are most freshest in what we know, like we retain more just at the moment that we learnt in and I find that that's the best time for me to teach you guys. So I'm very sorry if you come to this channel looking for a watercolour teacher. I am not it. There are plenty of amazing watercolour teachers, landscape teachers, expert teachers out here on YouTube and I highly highly recommend you check those ones out. So I'm just here to share my journey in the hope that it inspires you to carry on going with your journey. Anyway, admin done. Let's get on with painting. This week it's still watercolour black and white value studies as I said with a little bit more structure that he teaches you and I'm actually quite relieved that he's doing a second week of black and white studies because I've been really really enjoying the process of doing the black and white paintings. When I started watching the second week of the course I was like oh please don't start putting colours because I'm just enjoying this way too much and so I was really happy that it was just black and white. Now last week I was supposed to do 10 paintings I only did five <laughs> that you guys saw. I didn't do any extras off camera. And this week it's supposed to be six paintings. So I'm hoping I can do six this week, maybe three today and three later in the week. So we will be doing that first three today, hopefully. Oh baby, I love your madness. It's so Pandemonium 
that's all the paintings done. I did manage to get three done, which I'm really pleased about. As you can see, I tried to use different kinds of paper. I'm just going through lots of different kinds of paper to see which one I get on the best in terms of painting. Uh, this one is Jackson's Eco. This one is Winsor Newton's watercolor paper botanical paper i will leave link below to all three of these papers and this is the sultans and watford they're all in the rough texture because i want to see if rough was my thing normally cold pressed paper is my thing but i've never really tried painting on rough paper either so here i am trying that in terms of the paper themselves the Jackson Eco one ripped to shreds when I took the washi tape on. The washi tape wasn't on there for that long either, maybe 20 minutes. So this, as much as I love the texture it gives me, I don't think will be a paper that I will use maybe as part of a series because you have to deal with so much ripped paper and ripped paper is always always so heartbreaking when you've been painting and you take the masking tape off and the paper tears. So this is definitely out in terms of paper. The Winsor Newton one, I found you get a lot of bloom happening very easily. I felt slightly out of control with this paper. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of bloom where the paper looks dry, but it isn't. And it just blooms away when you add another layer. So in terms of that, I'm not keen on this paper. The Sword and Watford one, I had the easiest time. Last time I really enjoyed painting on the Sword and Watford cold press paper as well. The rough paper though, the rough texture is very mechanical. It's very repeated pattern. And I'm not sure if that's something I'm really into. So I like the Sword and Watford, but would I go for rough? Probably not because I do find that the pigments don't really pull into the dips and the texture of the paper and the shadow it casts kind of interferes with the painting that's on top. But these three were really good experiences to try and have a go. I think it's always important to try new things and find out if you like them or not and why you don't like them if it doesn't work out. If it works out, wonderful. In terms of painting, I felt a little bit off kilter today. I don't feel like I got the results I wanted in any of these paintings, but I particularly struggled with this one in terms of painting it because I mixed up the valleys way too much. There wasn't a clear distinction of different local valleys. So I definitely learned from that to not do that again. With this one, the painting was more enjoyable, but I'm not liking the results because that blooming and the way too out of controlness that I had with this paper. The other thing I didn't like was that I painted this a solid black because it was in the painting, but I think it would have been better if I left some texture in there. I was really happy with the way the clouds turned out though. So that's one good thing. And then this one was the one that I was most happy with. This thing was actually all rocks everywhere on this lower half, but I just simplified it to just few rocks. And when I started putting these three, I was like, okay, I'm not going to go any further on this one because then it just takes away from the simplicity of the painting. So out of these three, I'm definitely happiest with this, but overall, not really the happiest bunny I can be with the quality of the painting I did today. Hopefully, later in the week, I'll have a better session. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint these three paintings and learning from different kinds of paper. Do let me know which one was your favourite and whether you've tried doing monochromatic studies using black paint before. Whether you'd like to give it a go if you haven't done one before. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!